cereal and milk. Awesome. Hi, this is Alex from Green Revolution again, and we have the best, I mean, food waste disposal I've ever heard of. This is Frank, uh, Sally, and Sir. Can you please explain what we're doing here? Sure. We're adding raw food waste. Right. Uh, that's been generated inside a regional supermarket to our aerobic digester. Once inside the unit, millions of strands of bacteria will rapidly decompose this convert it into a liquid that is safe to discharge down the drain. So you're telling me that millions of bacteria are oh, going to convert right this. Here for you. It's actually yeah. discharging. That's what that food Oh, look at that. Is. So this this beats any sort of model I've seen of any compost from Mr. Sally because this goes back into the sewer, sewers, right? It is completely biodegradable. There is no extra uh, There's no uh, byproduct. No byproduct. No. And you, you don't have to use augers. You don't have to use anything that shaves or cuts or anything. No. It's all bacteria. No grinding, no cutting, no chopping. Uh, the bacteria will naturally just decompose this waste just the same way your stomach will use food waste as energy. Right. Uh, what will happen here is the bacteria will attack all the solid components of the food. Mm -hmm. And the byproduct will be that liquid, which is food is 70% water by makeup anyway. Food is 70% water. Right, so why attack 100% when we just have to attack 30%? Right. So let's rapidly turn that food, the solid, the 30%, into liquid. Uh huh. And let's discharge it down the drain. Let's eliminate the need for trucks and collection and Which is carbon, right? We're burning carbon. We're polluting the environment. Absolutely. We're, we're not paying someone to drive a truck or we're not polluting the environment while they drive that truck. Exactly. This is infrastructure that's already in place, right? Ah. So why not transport using infrastructure that's already in place? Infrastructure that's already in place. You're using the, using the systems. Existing plumbing. Existing yeah. plumbing, existing Absolutely. systems. Yeah. So this is, look at that. Now it has stopped, I guess, uh, exhaling or, or pumping yeah, out. Yeah, because what happens right? is the, the unit works in, in cycles. Okay. Right, so we add simply moisture, heat, and oxygen, which are key to the process. Moisture, heat, and oxygen. Yeah, the heat is naturally reoccurring. So as this food is digested, you can feel inside. You've probably felt some yeah. heat coming off here. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. We're nice. not heating this, um, oh, so there's no oof, combustion or whatnot. a nice perfume. Yeah, it's, it's you know, it basically no. smells like what you put in it. It almost smells like, in a, in a weird way, well, like right. I used to work at a wine shop. It almost you smells smell, like the fermenting. You smell wine. a little bit, well, that's what's happening right now. Yeah, right? Yeah, you probably, you smell some citrus right now. Citrus, and you yep. can see. I can see these are melon rinds for sure. So there's been a bunch of melons put in here today. Right this now, just, as of today, this has probably been loaded with, after what I just did, probably about 750 pounds. In one day? Yeah, so far they'll probably, and you can see what's left. Yeah. They'll probably end up guessing around 1,500 pounds for the day or so. So instead of throwing this out, like we said, and having a, a truck or, you know, another waste uh, uh, <clears throat> system or a waste company hauling these away, you're taking this produce that's not used Correct. and you're putting it back into the existing system the plumbing system Correct. and it's com completely returning to nature in the most carbon least intensive right eco-friendly way i mean this this to me is spinach and uh spinach i don't know what spinach looks and like something. crackers maybe. yeah yeah crackers like yeah that. spinach and crackers so none wow. of this is able to be sold all right right either the product has has been damaged or it's past its expiration date right um for whatever reason it can't be sold uh, so as opposed to having to store it in toters or, or cans here and have a waste company come and collect it, mm -hmm. transport it long distances and bring it to a landfill or even a compost facility, yeah, uh, it's gone right here. The beauty of it is we measure each and every increment of waste in real time mm -hmm. and present that data back to our customers so that they can quantify and qualify what are they wasting, when are they wasting it, and hopefully right. affect change in their supply chain management. And their so supply chain management. It. Yeah, supply chain management. So okay. ideally, if a supermarket knows it's wasting 50 pounds of bagels every day, right. ideally they'll bake 50 pounds less. Ah, because ultimately right. the best environmental solution is not to create the waste at all. I, can you say that again? That is like the, and this is from a businessman too. I, I interview all these like really true like professors and people eco-friendly, but this is like, I think where the rubber hits the road. You are making this happen and being profitable doing it. Can you say that last part again? I, I'm certainly not a professor. Yeah. Um, I am a businessman, but uh, I have a, a vast amount of environmental experience. Right. And ultimately, the ideal thing is to reduce the amount of waste that is created. Awesome. That's going to have the most positive environmental impact. In order to do that, mm -hmm. real-time data, real transparency into what is being wasted and when is it being wasted, 
is is crucial. It's awesome. So we need benchmarks. Right. Right. We have to understand what are we wasting. Historically, we don't know what we're wasting because it goes into some large dumpster, commingled with a week's worth of other stuff. All right. It gets hauled off by a hauling company, and and nobody ever knows. Here, we're quantifying every time every waste time. is added. In some cases, what is it? Is it produce? Is it meat? Is it deli? Is it prepared food? Right. So that our customers can get smarter. That's where we talk about supply chain management. Supply chain Let's management. Under, understand our supply chain management mm -hmm. and hopefully reduce what we're purchasing, resulting in less waste being created. So let's only let's only produce what we sell. Right. That's the ideal model from a profit standpoint for our customers as well as an environmental standpoint. So right. uh, that's what we do. Uh, it's phenomenal. And, and you literally, you showed me before, live, real time, you can not only see the inputs and the metrics of this machine, but you can um, communicate with the machine and it can say, you know, at capacity, being used 22%. I mean, that's, this is, absolutely. this, this is, I, I believe, and you know, I think about using a smart board in the classroom, right? You could use a smart board in the classroom to project. That's not the proper use of technology, right? You want to use technology in, in, to make it, to empower you, to free you up. This is one of the best uses of an environmental technology I've ever seen. So you can see here, when right. we came in, remember this was 712 pounds. Mm -hmm. So I've now added 31 pounds in my little demo. Yeah, yeah, here. Feel that. So they're up to 743 pounds. Uh, their max capacity is 1,200 pounds. Right. Uh, they've been averaging this particular location 1,390 pounds a day. So that's 1,390 okay. pounds that would have otherwise ended up in a landfill. And then producing leachate and, and methane, methane and super toxic abs pollution. Absolutely. And absolutely. You, you probably know more than most about CO2 versus methane. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. methane is magnitudes more toxic than CO2. 50 times more potent than CO2. 50 times more potent yeah. to the greenhouse gas emissions, to global warming, to, to just pollution, right? Yeah. Methane is, me methane is a harmful greenhouse gas right. that's not up to... You know, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, there's no dispute over whether methane is harmful to the environment or not. Right. It is. That's a scientific fact. Mm -hmm. So as waste decomposes in a landfill, one of the primary byproducts is methane emissions. Here, we don't have any methane emissions, right? We digest, we send it down the drain, it goes to a wastewater treatment plant where it's further treated and ultimately returned back to the ecosystem. That's so phenomenal. That's phenomenal. It's a closed loop system, closed -loop which system. makes it cost effective and environmentally so it, like this is, yeah, and, and so this takes literally, well, I mean, what does it take and what doesn't it take as far as food waste? Uh, this will take, this unit, think of it as your stomach, it'll take pretty much anything you can digest Okay. Uh, as a human being and then some. Uh, it will take pretty much any kind of food. It struggles with things like pineapple tops or corn hmm. husks. Things that you wouldn't right, you really wouldn't chew on and swallow. Right. Yeah, oh, right. Right. Sort of really uh, because, fibrous and yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very fibrous. Right. Um, you know, large steak bones uh, won't hurt the unit. Okay. But they won't be digested because it's mainly calcium. So the proteins and the fats will all get digested. The bone okay. will get cleaned up. Right. And it'll just kind of clunk around in there. Okay. So you, so okay. you remove it. So, but yeah. otherwise, pretty much anything goes. I mean, we're you happen to be in a grocery store today. Uh, groceries are a big vertical for us. Uh, prisons are a big vertical for us. Okay. Hospitals are a big vertical for us. When you say vertical, you, you mean uh, industry that industry, uses a vertically our aligned technology. industry, or yeah. So yeah. healthcare is one. Okay. Uh, supermarkets certainly. Casual dining uh, is another big one. Uh, the prison system is also a large one. Full service hospitality. So U universities and colleges. Yeah, universities and yeah, colleges. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Country yeah. clubs. Nice. Essentially, anywhere they're selling large quantities of food right. or feeding large quantities of people. Right. They're a candidate. That's phenomenal. So. And and so. And just to give us a, you know, could, could you give us some rough numbers about like how many of these are out there, uh, you know, because because it seems like something that almost like you know, the best kept secret about how to become more uh, profitable. How like you said, your what was it upstream management? Was it a uh, supply chain supply management, change manage, yeah. management yeah. right? So like how many of these are out there? And I just see these continuing to proliferate because I don't see a product better than it out there. Uh, so we've got about five hundred of them out wow. uh, right now around the world. Uh, we're in. I think 39 states and like 14 countries or so. 14 right countries, yeah. 39 states, over 500 of these. What, what do we call these again? These uh, are. This is, this is an EcoSafe digester. EcoSafe digester. Yeah, this, this is our largest so, model unit. Okay. Um, we also manufacture what we'll call sort of a compact unit that's okay. about the size of a copy machine. All right. Uh, you'll wow. see them more in small footprint grocery stores, Dunkin' Donuts. 
a small waste generator. What about so like a, 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 would it be reasonable as far as like return on investment for schools? Or? Yeah, K through 12 is, is, a, is a market that we're starting to look at awesome. now that we've launched a smaller product. Ah, so yeah. mo most K through 12s, uh, don't generate the kind, the volume of food waste that a unit like this. Right, this, right. You know, this unit here is about forty thousand oh, dollars. So, wow. you've got to generate a high volume of food waste to right. really make sense of it. Uh, our newest units, uh, which we call our Revolution Series, which is really a very small footprint, one hundred and fifteen volt application. Okay. Uh, those are much, much more cost effective. So they could fit the bill for K through 12 and smaller generators like quick service foods and, right. uh, and whatnot. So and is it just a leasing model or a purchase model or both? I'm curious we as far as- We prefer the leasing model. Okay. So okay. Uh, because there's bacteria in here, right. uh, we need to replenish those bacteria uh, oh. periodically through so, the year. So, I mean, I know there's naturally occurring bacteria like on all of us microbiome. So Absolutely. yeah, talk to us about so that. Th these will naturally reproduce. These right. will reoccur. However, as you saw, when right. we're discharging waste, yeah. we're discharging bacteria bacteria at the same time. Mm -hmm. Now that's harmless because the bacteria we discharge is uh, the same and similar bacteria as to what's being used in wastewater treatment plants. Okay. So in other words, we're introducing uh, a process called sort of upstream mm. and then it's flowing back to the wastewater treatment plants. They're using the same bacteria as and, a primary, right. so it all works well, right. but we do lose bacteria. Hmm. as we discharge. Well, so it, we'll replenish this oh, quarterly. Right, right, it goes with it, quarterly yeah. we'll reintroduce bacteria okay. just, to keep, uh, just to keep the bacteria That's kind of high enough to, it, to perform. Do you envision a future where this replaces many of the waste water treatment plants? Or, no. Or, no? And, and why no. would that be? No, 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 not at all. Uh, you know, we'll treat food waste. Yeah. Still, you know, even 2,000 pounds of food waste is still a relatively small increment. Okay. You know, wastewater treatment plants are treating large volumes. We're talking of human wastewater. sewage. We're talking everything, right? Whole different, whole oh, okay, different animals. Okay, gotcha. Just Much talk, more yeah. complex process. Okay. Think of what goes on here as sort of the primary process that would happen at a wastewater treatment plant. Okay. But then there are a whole bunch of two, three, uh, yeah, four other filtration. Uh, and yeah, other, because yeah. all that water is returning back to your pipes in right, your house. Right. So it's got to be sterilized, pure, you know, purified, cleaned, and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. As you saw, this is not drinking water. Right, right. Not by no right. means, but a lot better than compost, or a lot better than something that and reeks. It will end up, and it yeah. will end up drinking water. So right. Remember that statistic. Yeah. Seventy percent of these oranges are water. That's amazing, 70%. Right? So if we can reduce and attack that 30% right. and discharge 100%, essentially what we're doing is we are introducing net new water into the ecosystem. That's great. Right, so it's gotta be cleaned. Um, it's particularly valuable, let's say, in areas like California where there are droughts and whatnot. We don't right. see it so much in the Northeast here, but if I could take 70% of this orange and ultimately convert it into drinking water, Yes. then I'm not only helping the environment by reducing food waste and keeping it out of landfills, yeah. but I'm a net producer of water as well. So, you know, the possibilities for this product line uh, and our other product lines are, are, are countless. I mean, it's, it's exciting. It's yeah. a time right now where I think the United States is starting to follow in the footsteps of Europe okay. and become a more sustainable environment, yeah. you know, sustainable country. But in order to get there, uh, we'll have to leverage various technologies mm -hmm. because the old way, the tried and true way, is, is not gonna get us there, right, right? right? So we've gotta think outside the box and we've gotta embrace new technology. We embrace it everywhere else in our life. Mm -hmm. Why shouldn't we embrace it as it pertains to how, you know, waste and, and our environment? So, Phenomenal, yeah, and, um, and it, makes me, it makes me think about, I mean, so much, but I think about the triple bottom line, people, profit, and planet, right? You have these new corporations called B Corporations out there where it's written into their miss, mission to do, help the environment, you know, help people, and of course be profitable. And uh, I think that's exactly what you're doing here. Um, well, I think we, yeah, yeah, I think we touch on each of those three. Yeah, I mean, that's phenomenal. I think we touch um, on each of those three. And the fact is, this is proof that clean technology actually can be affordable. Ah, uh, okay. Right? That clean is, technology actually can be affordable. It's I mean, not for the super rich or the super, you know, you know, it's for everybody. There's a stereotype against clean technology right. out there, which hmm. is, oh, it always requires either subsidy or more money. It's more expensive. Well, that's not necessarily the case. Okay. Um, you just need to understand what is the right technology for the problem. And it can be deployed. Uh, economically, it um, doesn't necessarily require subsidy. Uh, like solar panels are currently being subsidized, but these are not. These right? are not. These do not. No. That that speaks even more powerfully because this, I, you know I've sold product, solar panels and this, this is. This product will typically save our customers yeah. as much as thirty percent. 
thirty percent. So we're <laughs> saving the environment. Right. We're measuring, right, and providing transparency into waste that they've never had before, mm -hmm. which is hopefully more meaningful. Yeah. Uh, and we're doing that and saving them thirty percent at the same time. And helping out Uncle Sam by paying taxes and not dipping into the taxpayer money. Absolutely. It's like a triple triple win. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, my pleasure. Thanks for what you're doing. Thanks for your time. I know you're busy. Uh, busy pleasure, man. So my pleasure. Appreciate my it so much. Hey, I'll sharpen anyway. Thank you. So. Thank you. Thanks Great so much, sir. Yeah, thank you.